Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. A little different today. It's the evening. Sun sets in 25 minutes. I'm out here in the pool. Didn't get my exercise this morning. Got up this morning. Immediately got in the car with Noy. And we went on about the third or fourth driving lesson. I guess I'm going to tell you a little story. So I did, didn't have any... Uh, any real breakfast right away this morning or anything like that. So, Noi, a few months back, I, for, I guess it was during the summertime. It's been a while now. She had never driven a car before. And she did not have a motorbike license or a motorcycle license here in Thailand. And she never drove a car because she never could afford a car. So why why go get your driver's license when you don't have a car? She didn't get a driver's license for a motorcycle, but they had motorcycles. So I sent her to this school, and that's how you get a driver's license for the most part. If you haven't had one before, you're supposed to go to a school, I think. And uh, they took her out to drive. And then they give her the approval to get the license. They give her a paperwork that she took her driving training and she's good to go. Well, that's a freaking lie. She scares me to death. Uh, but basically, she didn't have the time in. I mean, just... They didn't give her enough hours to put her out there in a car. Her basic skills aren't there. But this brought me back trying to teach that it reminded me of how valuable a good car with a good front suspension that is properly aligned is for driving and what I mean by that is having a front end that will track is important and for somebody who's driven for years they just ignore it or such but at one point in my life I had this 45 foot long motorhome and it had uh, 10 wheels Weighed about 14, 15 ton, 600 horsepower, big. It was sort of like a Greyhound bus size, take it like that. And the one thing that used to wear me out driving was the fact that there was a lot of slack in the wheel. Okay, and, and I mean, there you just go down the road and you're going like this. And the wheel was like this big. Let me back up here in case you can't see it. But the wheel was like that big. Yeah, it was a big wheel. And you, you it was like a truck. Well, we're on the expressway type road, except, you know, divided highway. And she... You know, it starts drifting left in the lane, and she turns it right, and then turn. Then she turns it left, and it turns. It turns it right, and it turns. And yeah, you know, at first I didn't really notice. I thought, well, she just, you know, has to get used to it. But then when I realized this, when you're really good at driving, yeah, you know, I started driving when I was ten. But when you really try to drive the same way you fly a plane and you fly a plane with pressure you don't fly a plane with movement it's more with pressure and in reality in the car we've got if you're going down a, a divided highway and you're in your lane if it starts drifting to one side 
I typically can take my finger and lower it a quarter of an inch at the edge of the wheel against the center spoke. A quarter of an inch, just put my finger on it and just put a little pressure and it'll drift this way. And when you get to where you want, you just release that little bit of pressure. And then when you're there on the other side, you just do a little pressure. And when you've got a good vehicle, you can drive the typical highway, even those parts of the highway that have orange signs that say curve coming. You can put a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch of pressure on one side of the wheel and go around a corner. But she's like, And her passenger's like getting an upset stomach. Maybe it was carnivore, maybe it wasn't. But eventually we took, you know, a break and got a uh, latte. And she bought some chicken from this place called Five Fingers Chicken. No, Five Star Chicken. Five Star Chicken. She got some grilled chicken. I have one piece about that big. Wasn't really interested in that. But we spent like three hours on the, on the road. And I'll tell you, it's been a long time since I taught anybody how to drive. Like, never. I always tried to avoid that. But it's clear that they didn't teach her, and I'm going to have to get her more accustomed to handling the automobile properly. She's a little rough on it. But I think we made a headway today because I think she finally realized that she needs to start not fighting the car, just sort of applying pressure. Now, I brought that to pilot training, and I really learned that more than anything else flying gliders. You always fly a plane and you, you can muscle it, okay, because... You got horsepower on a plane. You got propellers and they're pushing you. And and I always, you know, own twin engine planes. So, you know, there's lots you can do. And, and power makes up for all your ails. All the things you do wrong. But in a glider, you apply gentle pressures. You don't fight the plane. You fly the plane. You let the plane fly and you just fly, apply pressure. And when bad pilots, bad pilots, and I've flown with a few of my people that were bad pilots who took less training and took it less serious, they manhandle the plane around. They want to go up, they pull that thing back, and then they overshoot their altitude and they push it forward and they undershoot their altitude and they pull it back and they overshoot because they pull too hard and they pull too far. They push too hard and they push too far. And they they go back and forth and their porpoise, the plane's porpoise. Try to, you tell them, hold 3,000 feet. And they don't have an autopilot, just hold 3,000 feet. And it's like, yeah, that's right. Whereas a good pilot will put his finger underneath the yoke and just give it a little tickle, just a little, just a little pressure and, and, and let it slowly get up to that altitude. And then when you get right there at 3,000 feet, you just... Release that pressure just a little bit and you trim it up. Okay. Driving a car is no different. And when I drove my bus, the steering was so bad that after about four hours of driving, I was exhausted. I mean, it's, and there wasn't no way of doing pressure because you could put pressure on and you could move the wheel an inch. And it didn't go the way you were moving the wheel. It just kept going the wrong way. So you had to move it two inches to get it. And I took it back to the factory and they said, well, that's just the way it is. 
on this suspension. And it wore you the fuck out trying to keep it in your lane all the time. So, tell you one story about that with the motorhome. Scare, most scared I've ever been in my life, I think. And I've flown stunt planes and did tricks in them and all this other stuff, but we take the motor home. We're going from Las Vegas to Reno, Nevada. And there's only one little road that you can take to get there. I don't know what it's called, but it's a two-lane highway. But the speed limit's like 80 mile an hour. But it's not much bigger than your your ordinary side street. I mean, it's not real wide. And the runoff area, the shoulder is like gravel. And it's, it's not that big. But what you've got is you've got a lot of these truckers who are hauling mineral ores. And they're, they're running triple trailers. And these guys are running... 80, 90. I mean, there's no speeding cops out there. They're flying. And I'm driving this big motorhome with this big flat windshield. You're sitting three inches from the, I mean, you're sitting three feet from, from the windshield. And it's all fiberglass in front of you. And it's a big old flat windshield. And you're running 70 mile an hour too. So you would come this way and they'd be coming towards you with that big triple trailer. Now you've got closing speed of like 150 mile an hour plus. When they go past you, it would suck the windshield wipers off the window four inches and slam them back. It would literally suck the windshield wipers in the, the low pressure area of some sort would pull wind away from the motorhome and it would go boom. And the motorhome would go like this. Every time. And I'm thinking to myself, all it takes is one guy getting a text message, driving the other way and look down at his text message and not paying attention. And if he hits me, He'll, he'll swap me like a bug in that big old tractor trailer with the big front end and, and carrying, you know, tens of thousands of tons behind him, whatever it is. I mean, these things are triple trailers full of rock. And he's going 80 mile an hour. I'm going 70. I was never so scared in all my life. Yeah, you know, holding on to the wheel. Because just to keep it in your lane, it's two inches this way, two inches that way, two inches this way. Now you get hit by this tractor trailer wind, and it blows you like this, and you're like that. And then you're like this, and you're like that. And it was the same way with Noy today. So then I came back after about a three-hour trip and driving 120 kilometers. She got a little better. She started using a little bit well she i couldn't get her to use a finger she's still 10 and 2 you know whoever taught you 10 and 2 i'm just trying and fi i drove a while and i showed her i'm just using i drove for miles I, all i used was a finger on the expressway i never had to do anything more than maybe a half an inch and for the typical expressway you never have to a good car you shouldn't have to move you can change lanes with a quarter of an inch, if you think about it. Just a quarter of an inch and let it slowly change lanes. Just quarter inch, slowly change lanes. Yeah, you know, student drivers, yeah, you know, change the lane. Turn signal. And by the way, turn signals are on the right-hand side of the wheel here. I constantly, to this day, to this day, I try to turn left and the windshield wipers start going because that's on the left side like America's got their turn signals on the left side of the wheel. Still, been driving a, a lot here. I still took the windshield wipers on and off to make a left-hand turn. So, 
Anyway, came home, Noy seared up a steak that was this big. I ate half of it, put the rest in the refrigerator for later tonight. It's just about the sun setting. It's beautiful. It's warm. The pool feels great. I feel great. Noise losing inches. I'm losing inches. So we're going to get her to learn how to drive. And uh, it's easy on me. That way I can send her to places and go do this, go do that. If I don't feel like doing it, I could do something else I'd rather do. But first, I got to get her to drive to where I ain't scared to death. She still scares me to death. I, I did good today, though. I didn't yell, not once. I kept my voice low and calm and don't yell because if I yell, I get her upset and then she's worse. So I got to keep calm, calm, calm. But, you know, you can only see the guardrail coming so close a couple times and, you know, Luckily, every once in a while, my hand can go out and grab the wheel and shove it the right way. Yeah, flip that old, old wheel and go in there. But, uh, hey, you know something? Feels good to help people. And she's going to benefit from, from knowing how to drive a car. And, uh, yeah, well, I'm having fun on the carnivore diet. I'm getting thinner by the minute but it ain't easy tonight might have a little more of that steak might have uh, a snack of chicken wings but for now as the sun goes down and I got a few more exercises to do in the pool it's so warm in here I don't even want to get out it's so nice I mean it's just the water is about 86 degrees and uh, outside temperature, suns, the sun sets in eight minutes, although it looks like it's almost set now. And the outside degrees is 86 degrees outside. So the water is about 86 or 87, and the outside air temperature is about 86 or 87. Life is good. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about my driving story. That's all, folks.